Um, so this evening we are doing our first Facebook Live with Body Science on the topic of macronutrients and calories. Uh, this is the topic that I get asked about a lot um, and it's one that I'm really keen to share with you guys. So before we get started, um, I just give you a little bit of run back down on myself. My name is Harriet Walker and I'm an accredited sports dietitian and I work with Body Science um and help them out with their um their product development and recommendations around that stuff so super excited to be involved with these we'll be running these facebook lives every tuesday at 6 p.m queensland time and you can look forward to topics from myself um, as well as dr brad McEwen, um, who is a specialist in herbs um, and nutrition and also from um, Dr. Craig Duncan, who is a sports performance psychologist who does a lot of really fantastic work in the area of self-science. So before we get started, um, just make sure that you sign up to Body Science and make sure you get the alerts so that you know that what's happening each week. Um, so yeah, we'll just dive right on in. So tonight we're talking about calories and macros, as I have said. Um, <clears throat> and I get asked probably once or twice a week at least on, so should I be counting calories or should I be considering macros? Um, and the annoying answer is you actually should, if you're, going, if you're going hard on this stuff, we really need to be considering both of these because calories are um, a way of um, understanding how much energy that we're consuming. Macronutrients give us an extra layer of detail about the kinds of calories that we are having. So to start off, let's just have a little look at, um, at calories. So calories are a unit of energy and it gives us an indication of how much um, energy is in a food. We could use the term calories, we could also use the term kilojoules, Kilojoules are the, um, the metric measure, which is probably what we should be using, uh, I should be using in Australia, but I find calories are a smaller number and a little bit easier to, um, to get my head around. So for tonight, I'm talking calories. Um, but essentially, everybody has a calorie budget that they need to consume in order to meet their health needs, micronutrient requirements, and to maintain a healthy weight. So when we overeat um, that budget, we will put on weight. When we undereat that budget, we will lose weight. Um, uh, but basically calories are just our first point of call when it comes to how much energy we should be taking in. And everyone's energy budget will be different. It'll differ according to the size of their body, height, weight, gender, age, activity levels, all that kind of thing. So the more active you are, the more energy you require, the more calories you need to consume, the less active you are, we can probably pull back on the calories. That's really the basics there. When we look at macronutrients, we're talking about carbohydrates, fats, and protein. So there's three. Um, each one of these we consume in large amounts, which is why we call them macro. And this is how we get our energy. Um, so carbohydrates are a really easily digested use source of energy for us. Um, protein is a macronutrient that is used, we can use it as energy, but it's also used for structure. So hair, skin, nails, muscles, ligaments, tendons are all made with proteins. Um, and then finally, fats are a slow burning source of energy and are really important for um, other physiological processes such as hormone production and um, cell integrity. So basically what we're focusing on is how much of what, what percentage of your diet is coming from carbohydrates, what percentage of your diet is coming from protein and what percentage of your diet is coming from fats. Um, <clears throat> and we need to have a little bit of everything in order to have a balanced diet. And I'll go into a little bit more detail later on about how we might manipulate these percentages. But basically, um, in order to figure out the relationship between calories and macronutrients, we'll have a little look at the calorie content of carbohydrates, fats and proteins because they're not all the same. And this is where the, the story will start building up and hopefully starting to make a bit more sense. So when I consume one gram of carbohydrate, I get four calories of energy. 
When I consume one gram of protein, I also get four calories of energy. And when I consume one gram of fat, I get nine calories of energy. So basically when I consume carbohydrates, fats and protein, they're getting broken down in my stomach, in my digestive system and absorbed into my um, blood and through various metabolic pathways, they are being broken down further into a, an energy substrate called ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which is used by our cells to fuel our everyday activities. So um, essentially we eat macronutrients in order to yield the energy, the calories that we require um, in order to function um, day to day. So what this means is that um, I need to know my calorie budget. This is made up of um, my resting metabolic rate, my the energy cost of digesting my food, the energy cost of exercise and the energy cost of my just general daily activities. I take my energy budget and then I want to focus it down and split it up across um, my three macronutrient splits. So I want to make sure that I'm having um, a certain percentage coming from carbohydrates, might be say 50%, I might have 30% coming from fats, and I might have 20% of my energy budget going towards um, protein. So basically what this means is if I was going to have 200 grams of carbohydrate, I would multiply that 200 by four, which is four calories per gram. And I would know that I was getting 800 calories um, from carbohydrates. Then if I was getting 100 grams of protein per day, I could multiply 100 grams by four calories and know that I'm getting 400 grams, 400 calories of energy from protein. And if I was consuming 50 grams of fat, I know that I'm getting around 450 calories because 50 times 9, 450, and we are getting that many calories from fats. So if I add that all up, I'm getting around 1,650 calories of energy from 200 grams of carbohydrate, um, 100 grams of protein, and 50 grams of fat. So basically, that's how it's done. That's how we're taking our energy budget and we're layering on another level of information by distributing those macronutrients into the picture. So the question is, which one is better to count? Is it calories? Is it macros? Well, essentially, if you're counting calories alone, you're not going to really have a sense of if you're achieving your macronutrient requirements. But if you're counting macros, you can, you're actually also accounting for uh, an amount of calories. What you want to make sure is that your macronutrient budget, your grams of carbohydrate, grams of protein and grams of fat can be multiplied up to meet, generally speaking, around the same amount of calories as you require each day. And when you know that that's happening, you can just count the macronutrients and know that you're within your energy budget. Um, from a sports nutrition perspective, there is definitely a um, certain level that we want to be consuming um, in order to meet our health. So if I decided to take on a dietary approach that manipulated my uh, macronutrient percentages out, um, I might be pushing out um, other macronutrients. So if I decide to go on a high fat, high protein, low carb diet, say just by eating um, steaks all day, um, <clears throat> I'm pushing out my percentages, having a higher proportion of my energy from um, fats and proteins, and I'm pushing down my percentages coming from carbohydrates. What this doesn't give us any information on is how healthy that approach is for our long-term health. And that's one of the biggest caveats I will say with just counting calories and just counting macros is we're not really getting a sense of the types of foods that we're consuming and we're not getting a sense of the micronutrients that we are taking in. And micronutrients is a topic I will be talking about in a few weeks. So get um, excited for that. 
Um, I've got a couple of questions here, which is cool, and I'll answer those as we go along. Um, so somebody has asked, how do I work out my macros and calories for weight loss? Um, so basically, there's a lot of different ways to sit a cat, and it's going to be people who have different approaches from, from this. Um, what you want to do is figure out what your calorie budget is. And this is a topic that I will be covering off um, in our two weeks time when I cover off on energy balance. So I'll definitely go um, into this in a little bit more detail, but basically long and short, I want to figure out what my energy budget is. Um, and then I want to make sure that I'm hitting an adequate amount of protein. So from a sports nutrition perspective, and also from if I'm trying to manage my weight, I'd be looking at a protein intake of somewhere in the vicinity of 1.6 to 2 grams per kilo of body weight. I'd be making sure, um, so I would I would map that out and that might turn out to be about 120 grams of, um, if I was going two grams of protein per kilo of body weight on a 60 kilo person, that's gonna be 120 grams of protein per day required. Um, I could times that one, 120 by four and figure out how many um, calories I'm getting from protein, which is gonna be about 480 on the fly. Um, and then I want to figure out where I put my um, carbohydrate level at and where I put my uh, fat level at, and that can go up or down according to personal preference. So some people prefer a higher carb diet. Some people will prefer a um, higher fat diet. But as long as I'm in an energy deficit, so I figured out my calorie budget and have knocked up around 300 calories, that's how I'm achieving weight loss. So I'm making sure my protein um, intake is there. Um, <clears throat> but then I'm also filling in the rest of my calorie budget from carbohydrates and fats and just making sure I'm eating in a calorie deficit consistently. And that's how we achieve um, weight loss. So basically the key with weight loss is making sure that you know what your calorie requirements are. And I will talk um, on this a little bit more in two weeks time. Um, and then that you're making a reduction. We don't want a massive reduction because that generally speaking isn't sustainable. Um, and then just making sure that I'm hitting a really good chunk of protein spread across the day in order to maximize the, um, uh, the thermic effect of protein. Um, that's all good. Thanks for asking. Sleep and weight loss. Can you talk on how that affects it all? So um, very top level stuff. When we sleep, there's a number of different processes that are going on. Basically, we've got a layer um, that protects our brain from day-to-day -day potential um, invasion. Um, we've got a second layer, so it's called the blood-brain barrier. And this actually can't, um, this means that our brain is actually protected from the rest of our body, which is a good thing. But we do need to flush out our brain. When we're going throughout the day, our body, our blood system is flushing out all the, you know, the byproducts of the metabolic processes in our body um, <clears throat> really effectively. Kidneys and liver are taking care of that. At night time, one of the key factors in um, sleep is actually flushing out. Um, there's an, another little system that goes on at night time and it flushes out our brain, which is really cool. Another thing that happens um, uh, with sleep or lack thereof is there actually is a hormonal um, tie in with this. So if I'm getting adequate sleep, not only am I asleep for longer, therefore I have reduced my opportunities to eat because I'm sleeping. So it's making sleep a really good weight loss tool. Um, when I'm undersleeping, we know from research that that can actually um, affect the hormones associated with appetite. Um, so we know that as little as five hours sleep can actually increase the hunger hormone, which we call ghrelin, and decrease our satiety hormone, which is called leptin. And we know that even just one night of poor sleep can actually impair this. So when we don't get enough sleep, not only are we generally not feeling great, we do tend to have um, less motivation. We have less ability to say no to things. We also have an increase in hunger hormones, a decrease in our satiety hormones. And this is really a picture whereby we are 
overeating and generally speaking we're reaching for the sugary and sweet things so there's a number of different factors in the weight sleep um, factor we also know that in sleep we're doing the recovery thing so brain recovery joining the dots we know that a lot of our muscle recovery is occurring at night time as well which means it's really important um, to make sure that from uh, an energy perspective not overeating on your calories that we are paying attention to our sleep um, <clears throat> to make the most of that so pulling it all together calories are the unit of energy <clears throat> that we need to focus on in order to stay in energy balance we need to make sure that we're eating um, the amount of energy that we require to do our bodily functions um, and we are meeting our energy out so energy in and energy out need to be accounted for in order to stay weight stable um, but macronutrients are the next level down and it gives us an extra layer of information about the types of foods that we are consuming in order to make up our calorie budget so you could choose to choose to count just calories or you could choose to count just macros which would therefore also account for your calorie intake if you were to multiply that out um, so macronutrients are probably a slightly more useful measure of the diet but I will also say once again that macronutrients and calories are not the full stop. They are the beginning of the story. We need to make sure that we are accounting for other factors of nutritional adequacy, such as micronutrient intake, um, antioxidant intake, water intake, fiber intake, and all of those things. We need to make sure that we're paying attention to the timing and the setup of the diet with those macronutrients. Um, and we also need to make sure that we're monitoring any changes that we're making to make sure that it's working so we can have estimates on how much we need, we're having but we also need to make sure that on the flip side of that that um, we are actually meeting our requirements for good health for energy output and to making sure that we're performing our best so um, that's the 101 of calories and macronutrients um, Make sure that you tune in next week. We have Dr. Craig Duncan tuning in and he is going to be talking on the topic of self-science and giving us a number of different strategies we could use to monitor ourselves to optimize our own personal performance, which I know I'm super excited about. Um, make sure that next week um, you tune in for that. And if you haven't checked out the Body Science podcast, be sure to jump onto the Body Science website, bodyscience.com.au, hit the podcast tab and you'll get put through to all of our previous podcasts, including myself, Dr. Brad, Dr. Craig, and a number of really awesome professionals who have been interviewed on there as well. So um, we will be doing a number of different topics across the next um number of months so if you do have any suggestions for topics make sure you comment below we've got some great um suggestions there already um get in contact and stay in touch thanks for having me